Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I wanted to show a little technique I've been using to paint grass onto a landscape. So here's your typical case. You have a landscape. That landscape uses a material which has a grass layer. And that grass layer is sampled to automatically spawn one or more mesh instances. And so you can paint your grass material onto your landscape and you have that kind of result, right? Now, there's two things that are bothering me with that approach, at least visually. First of all, there's no gradient in the grass, meaning you paint your grass and instances are spawned, period. There's no subtlety in the way you paint your grass instances. It's either there or it isn't, right? Second issue I have, the grass is following the orientation of the landscape and depending on the slope, your grass may grow and lean sideways and that doesn't look so good. Grass doesn't grow like that. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you is how you go from this to that. The grass remains vertical, no matter the terrain, and nicely fades in. And you can use regular foliage instances as well, as I'm going to demonstrate. Let's modify my landscape material and turn off the automatic grass instancing. That is now turned off, and my grass layer only contributes to the albedo now, as expected. Now look what happens when I add instances by hand. It still somewhat match what I painted on the landscape, meaning I can then paint the grass layer on my material as a way to control how tall and thick my grass is, which is quite interesting, right? And I personally think it's visually way more pleasing than what we had before. Now, how is it done? Well, it's actually quite straightforward but obviously comes at a small performance cost. It's a couple of vertex instructions and a virtual texture sampler. As usual, profile your game, and depending on your targeted frame rate and platform, that might be too costly for you. But anyway, let's move on. So we are in our favorite 3D software. We modeled our grass just like we would typically do. We did the UVs and all that good stuff. In the second UV channel now, we are going to store the pivot points X and Y coordinates. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's actually quite simple. It's like we encode the position of each mesh pivot so that when they are collapsed down to a single mesh and exported, we can then later recompute each pivot's position using UVs. It's hard to see what's going on because again, we are not encoding UVs in a 0-1 normalized space for texture purposes, right? But actual world position in centimeters. And so Blender isn't too cooperative with that. Let me scale this down. So each of these points is the X and Y coordinates of the pivot of a grass blade, okay? You can kinda see the pattern of my grass blades in the UVs, right? And storing that information is extremely useful. Like for wind animation to begin with, you might want to rotate each grass blade around their own pivot point instead of the object pivot point for obvious reasons. But we'll also use those pivot points for something else, more on that later. Anyway, moving on, there are scripts to bake pivots for 3ds Max, link will be in the description below. And you can find one for Maya and Blender as well, I think. I personally made my own script for Blender. So that was our second UV channel. In the third one, we'll store the height of our grass. So like we do a basic view projection from the side view, just like that. We only need the height, so our Y axis, and so we can use the X axis to store any other value we'd like to have. I tend to store a random value per grass blade for an eventual usage in my shaders. Now that we are done, our mesh is ready, but before exporting it, we are going to flatten it. Squish. Now back in the editor, it looks like this once imported. Great, isn't it? And that's it. I hope you find the tutorial useful. No, I'm kidding. So in the material, we'll use the world position offset to basically offset the vertices, like 50 units in the Z axis. I'm sure you are aware of how that works. And so you guessed it. We'll use our third UV channel, the one where we store the height of our grass blades to push the vertices up like so using the green channel, which corresponds to the Y axis. Plug that into the world position offset and there's nothing. That's to be expected because our UVs are in a zero to one normalized space. So we do displace vertices indeed, but by one centimeters, which is pretty much invisible. 
let's multiply that by 100 okay okay something's happening so first of all the y-axis needs to be flipped so y in minus will do the trick that's due to graphics api some will have the origin like in the top left corner and some will have the origin in the bottom left corner okay better but seems like the taller the grass is the sideways it goes that's simply because we are sending a fluid value into a vector and so it gets converted into x y and z thus the 45 degrees offset because as we have said vertices upward they get shifted equally on the x and y axis as well we can fix that by multiplying our float value by a vector and then we nullify the x and y components okay good we can now specify a custom height value for grass and no matter the grass rotation the vertices will be pushed upward along the world z axis which is exactly what we wanted now to thicken it it's slightly more complicated bear with me we are going to use the pivot points to basically collapse the grass vertices sort of like a scale factor first of all we need to convert the pivot points we stored in the uv coordinates to world coordinates and that little setup will do that nicely for us make that a material function so here i have a setup that will let me scale each grass blade individually around their pivot point let me explain. I take the pivot point position of each grass blade in world space, subtract that to the current vertex position in world space as well, and that gives me a vector. And that vector is basically both the direction and the distance each vertex needs to travel to reach their pivot point. Add a multiply with a parameter, and we now have the ability to scale our grass blades. All we need to do still is combine both our technique to push the vertices upward in the z-world axis and scale our vertices around our pivot points. We'll need a common scale factor. For our height technique, we'll simply multiply our height parameter by our scale factor. To that, we are going to add the scale technique, which we also multiply by the same scale factor. With that being done, we can now give a height to our grass blade while controlling their thickness. Very last step, we are almost there. How can our landscape have any say in this? Well, if I open my landscape material, you can see that I write all kinds of stuff into the virtual texture output. Setting up virtual texture is slightly out of scope for this video, so let me know in the comments if you'd like a separate tutorial on the subject. Anyway, I'm writing my z-world location, albedo, roughness, normals, and I also sample my grass layer to write that value into the mask input. For this to work though, you'll need a specific virtual texture setting, because by default the mask input will not be used. But if you set your virtual texture like so, you'll be able to use the mask input. Not that it leads to a heavier memory usage, but that's a cost we'll have to pay. Back in my grass material, all I have to do now is sample that virtual texture and use that mask output as a skill factor. And we are done. That wasn't so bad, right? I like virtual textures, they are cool, man. Tons of stuff you can do with them. Do note that they are slightly more costly than regular texture samples, but again, that's a cost I'm personally willing to pay to get those kind of nice effects. Hope you find that useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you need any help. Consider leaving a like and subscribe if you appreciated the video. Also, I have just launched a Patreon where I share all kinds of cool projects and where I will soon start to show the progress on my own game. Also, consider following my Twitter account where I post all kinds of small tips and random doodles. That's it. Thanks a lot for your time. I'll see you in the next video. See ya.